Welcome everybody to another episode of Lazio Lounge. I'm Vittorio Campanile and uh, with me today there is not Alasdair McKenzie. We did a little bit like Lazio today against Frosinone, a little bit of turnover. So Alasdair today is on the bench. Instead with me there is Rami Algendi. Hello Rami, how are you? Hey Vittorio, nice to be back. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm still a little bit shaking, I have to tell you this. Uh, and I just said to my wife, why do I have to struggle like this every time? Uh, I mean, it's, it's against Frosinone. It should be not an easy match, but you go ahead in the first half, you should be controlling the match, which Lazio was doing. But in the last 20 minutes, Rami, uh, Frosinone start pushing. They were uh, attacking. Luckily, they didn't have that many chances. I, I mean, Strakosha made only one great save. But still, you can see that the goal could arrive uh, any moment because I thought some of the Lazio players were destroyed. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I, I think nobody thought that uh, we can see a, a worse uh, ending to the match uh, after the Inter game. But I think today was even worse than what happened against Inter. Because, the, like you said, we, we, we should have been in control of the game. But I think from the first half, even the first half, we had no control in the game. We had so, so many missed passes. Padel today really disappointed me. He was very bad. We had no control in the midfield. Uh, the, the defense was good, but in the last 20 minutes, after Luis Alberto especially came off, we, we lost total control of the game. Uh, Frizzanoni could have and probably should have scored. Uh, they, uh, Piramonti, or I think his name, missed a great chance, unbelievable chance. And then Strakosha made an unbelievable save as well. So I think we were very lucky today to, uh, to get three points. Um, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think at Lazio deserved to win today. But how, how often did we see uh, Lazio playing better than the other team and not getting the three points? Uh, the last example is against Juventus, for example. Uh, and knowing a little bit the story of this team... Uh, <laughs> We wouldn't be surprised because we see it happen a lot of time. Um, so, you know, especially against Frosinone, that it's a team that's fighting for uh, relegation. And uh, you can, uh, in the second half, uh, they were playing with like four strikers. So uh, it was tough for a, a three-man defense to, to handle that. But I, I thought that the key at that point was to keep the ball the midfielder should have kept the ball instead of try, trying to go and score the second goal. Uh, instead, uh, Rami, we saw often Lazio trying to send the ball in front and maybe try to find another goal. But as we said, Immobile was knackered and when Luis Alberto came off, uh, he didn't have any other option there. So I don't agree with, with that decision with the players to, to try to score a, another goal instead of keeping the ball. Yeah, I think we we always do that. We always look for uh, for to score more goals uh, instead of looking to, to to finish the game and close the game. Uh, even L L Lucas uh, w was uh, going forward too many times when we should we shouldn't have done that. But uh, I think uh, we like you said we couldn't uh, have two passes in the midfield. Uh, everyone was missing their passes, Lucas and Berisha. So it's what it was very strange. And I also think that uh, the decision, uh, the substitutions were very bad from Inzaghi today. Uh, I can, I know Caicedo was wasn't that good, but Immobile should have came off because he 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 was very tired. He played three games uh, in a row in one week, uh, very intense games against uh, Inter, 120 minutes, and against uh, Juventus, that was a very tough game. So. I think he, he should have taken Mobley off and kept Casido, even if he was not playing very well. You know how much I don't love Casido, and I think he missed the first chance was a great chance and probably Chiro Mobley would have scored. But I thought he wasn't playing that bad and especially um, he was keeping the ball, he was putting pressure on the defenders even though because Chiro Mobley wasn't playing uh, well at all. At the beginning I thought, Rami, that maybe it was Casado that was creating some problem to, to Immobile. But when Casado came out, still Immobile played badly. So it wasn't uh, Casado's fault. 
Um, so, yeah, you know, Casado, I think he scored the, 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 the most difficult chance he had today and missed two very good. But at least you can see that he was fighting. While Chino Mobile in the second half really it was uh, gone. Yeah, I, I don't. I really don't blame Immobile in this game because he he looked very tired and, and he has every right to be tired after the Inter game and the Juventus game. But uh, like you said, when we played with two strikers, Frizinoni uh, didn't have uh, many spaces uh, and couldn't attack like uh, after uh, Caicedo came off. Uh, when Caicedo came off, we looked uh, like we wanted to keep uh, the ball and, uh, and not attack anymore. So that gave uh, Frizzinoni more courage to, to come at us, and uh, they uh, had uh, some very good chances. But uh, like you said, I, like I said, uh, I think Immobile should have come off in the 60 minutes. Uh, thank God, uh, when Luis Alberto was injured, we had a substitution, or else we would be in more trouble. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and Correa didn't play today. Uh, he trained all week, but he came out limping uh, out of uh, uh, Inter Lazio of Coppa Italia. So I believe that's the main reason why he didn't play today. He was on the bench, but I think Inzaghi didn't want to risk him. Uh, and so that's why when Luis Alberto came off, uh, Lulic came in. Uh, I was... Obviously, if Correa would have been fit, I believe he would have come in. Uh, again, it, it looks like, Rami, that when there is a, an emergency in, in midfield, uh, the solution for Inzaghi is put in Lulic. You can see, you saw him playing on the left side, playing on the right side, and this in this case, uh, on the central position. Uh, I was happy to don't see Lulic playing to, starting today because I thought he he's not playing very well in the last uh, matches he didn't play that well. So I was a little bit surprised to see him coming in today after you know some bad performance. Yeah, I thought that uh, to be honest, I thought that Cataldi will come, will come in for uh, for Luis Alberto, especially that he's fresh and he he doesn't even play anymore. So. I thought Inzaghi should have had some courage today to play the players uh, that uh, are fresh. Uh, but he played uh, the same team, almost the same team uh, as against Inter, which uh, at the end of the game, as we all saw, every player was very tired. Immobile couldn't run anymore. Uh, Luis Alberto got injured. It looks like it's a muscular injury because of fatigue. Uh, uh, so... Uh, even Lucas uh, didn't uh, really play that well. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I thought uh, the players today, uh, some of them, I can blame them after the Inter game, to be honest. But uh, some of them were really disappointing. Like, um, after Brescia came on and uh, and uh, even Dormisi really wasn't that good today. I, I thought, and I complain a lot about... Badel in the in the other matches, but I thought Badel was one of the best today in the midfield. Uh, I think finally he played like we were expecting. He missed a big chance in the first half, but that's not what you're looking for from him. Um, so I was a little bit surprised when I saw him coming out, especially because we had Parola that already have to receive a yellow card, was close to receive a second yellow card uh, yeah. and get off. So knowing a little bit in Zaghi, Often when, when a midfielder gets a yellow card and it is in dangerous, he immediately takes it off. So I was really surprised because Badel was playing well, Parolo was, you know, a risk of a second yellow card. Instead, uh, Badel came out. That what that was a little bit surprising. Yeah, I, I disagree with, uh, with your opinion. I think Badel today was, was not good. Uh, it's probably why he came off, why Nzegi... Substitute him. He missed so many. Uh, he had so many missed passes. I don't think he had. He had one or two uh, good passes. Uh, he was in. Uh, he wasn't in control of the game. Uh, in the first half, he made a terrible pass. It almost cost us a goal. So uh, I think uh, Parolo. Oh, yeah, was very lucky today not to get a yellow card. I told him that the referee was going to give him a second yellow. Uh, he was very uh, kind to him. But I think Inzaghi kept him because Parol was going to miss the next game. 
So I think Inzaghi he said, uh, well, he's not going to play the next game, so uh, I, I'm not going to play uh, another player. Uh, I'll keep another player fresh for the next game. So, yeah, I, I don't think Padel uh, played well today. Yeah. yeah, it could be an option that Parolo is missing the next one. But the other thing is, and, and we said it already, players were tired because of the match of last Thursday against Inter. So Inzaghi mm. tried a little bit to rotate, Badel started, um, um, Durmizi okay. started, Casedo started, etc. But then you bring in Lulic, who played Thursday, uh, Leva, who, plays th- who played Thursday. Uh, it didn't make th- that much sense for me, especially uh, yeah. knowing that you know you have Cataldi, uh, you have other options available, luckily. Uh, so, yeah, I know Patrick Bowman tweeted us about the, the substitution didn't make sense. Uh, I, I, yeah. agree, I agree. I thought the, the, the substitution didn't make that much sense today with Inzaghi. Um, yes, there were a lot of p- players tired, Yes, nobody expected the, the injury of Luis Alberto, but still I thought uh, he could change something and make different substitutions. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I said it uh, already. Uh, it, it made no sense to, to take off Caicedo, who's, uh, who is more fresh than Immobile, who played uh, 102, 20 minutes on Thursday, on uh, Tuesday. It made no sense taking Caicedo off, even if he's not playing that well. Uh, but he still scored the goal. He was dangerous. He, he, he wasn't that bad, to be honest. And uh, even Padel. Padel is supposed to be fresh. I, I don't remember even the last time he played. Yeah. So he's supposed to be fresh. Why, why bring Lucas on? Why not bring Cataldi? So mm. It made no sense at all. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Leva played... I would say played decent, but not as well as, as the other performance. So... It didn't help bringing me on. So, and I have to say, I was looking forward to see Berisha start today. He didn't start, but when he came in, he made a lot of mistakes. I'm, I don't know what to say about this player because I was really happy to see him signing for Lazio. I thought he could really give a lot to this team. And we remember when he came in, at, in uh, against Parma, he was great. But after that, we didn't see him playing that well. And as well today, he made a couple of bad mistakes that could have cost Lazio three points today. I, I, I don't know what to think about this player now. I think uh, Perisha's problem is that he needs to play more. He needs to, 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 to have more time uh, on the field to get used to the, his teammates, to get used to the formation, to get used to, the, to what Nzagi uh, needs. He doesn't play like five, six weeks, and then you throw him uh, in a game for 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and uh, when the team is, uh, is not really performing and is not really uh, fresh. So I think uh, every time uh, Brescia played, he was bad because the situation and circumstances were not in favor of him. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't play well today, I agree. He had a lot of missed passes, but you have to, 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 to think about the other players he was playing with. They were all very tired. Every time uh, he wanted to play forward, uh, Immobile <laughs> completely stopped. Uh, Lulic was not uh, uh, helping him. Uh, Lucas was not helping him. So I think I think Berisha's problem is he needs some confidence. Uh, he needs to play more. He needs uh, a lot of time on the on the pitch to get used to his teammates. Hmm. Yeah, I think even he's a type of player who needs to play a lot to to get in shape. Uh, which m- maybe will happen because uh, next Thursday there is uh, uh, Lazio Empoli, so there's not much time for for Lazio to rest. Uh, Maruzi, um, Maruzi, sorry, Miniko Isavic will be back from uh, yeah. from the suspension, but we are going to lose Parolo, so maybe there's going to be a spot for 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 Berisha to start. Talking about yeah, we're, lo- we're losing Parolo and Luis Alberto for sure, and probably even Immobile. Yeah, so that's a lot of. Uh, yeah, we 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 have to see what happened to uh, to Luis Alberto because everybody thought it was a bad injury, but it looks like, at least this what uh, what the TV said that he said to the to Inzaghi that it was just cramps, so, <laughs> and Inzaghi looked yeah. look at him really badly because said 
Yeah. <laughs> I cannot make a substitution because of cramps, you know. So, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just a sign that he could uh, get hurt and prefer, prefer to to get out. But, but yeah, let's hope that... I don't think he's going to risk him next Thursday. So, we have to wish, hope that Correa will be back. Uh, yeah, and, fi- and Correa, yeah. So, probably it's going to be Correa and Casado starting... Uh, next Thursday, or may- with Milinkovic Savic maybe playing behind them. So, but before talking about Empoli, uh, let's finish talking about the match of today. Uh, Durmizi started, I think it was the first start in Serie A for him. Um, I think one problem with Durmizi is that he likes to move too often to a center position and doesn't give option to. to to Lazio, especially we saw Luis Alberto with the ball that was turning on the left and didn't see Durmizi because he was already in a central position. And uh, I think that was one of the reasons why Lazio struggled today at the beginning. Uh, but even though he didn't play amazingly well, you can see the effort. And especially uh, at the end of the match when all Lazio players were released really tired, he was still running and giving everything. So... I like the effort of Durmizi. I think I still think he has to understand better how to play in this three-five-two formation. Yeah, uh, his situation is like uh, Borussia. I think he needs more time to play. Uh, like you said, he was uh, until the end of the game. He was uh, running because he's fresh. He, he didn't play a lot this season, like Borussia and uh, even uh, some other players like Lukaku. Uh, so he's he's pretty fresh. Uh, and uh, he wasn't bad today, but he wasn't uh, as 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 uh, as good as uh, against Inter. I think against Inter he he, he was really dangerous. Uh, I liked him a lot against Inter, but uh, today um, he defended well. He was good uh, defensively. Uh, in attack, he didn't really uh, get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, chances to, to to deliver or to uh, to play the ball. But I think he's overall he's not bad. He's yeah, I, more. I, I, I hope to see more from him. Uh, I was hoping to to see a better performance. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he wasn't the worst on the pitch today. Uh, Leo on Twitter asked us, why do we love beating Frosinone 1-0? Because we like to struggle. <laughs> you know, we like to... to, to Give fans, uh, you know, a heartbeat till till the end, last whistle. We, we, I mean, first half, Frosinone didn't have a single chance. I thought Lazio controlled the match, should have finished, and they didn't. And then in the second half, when Frosinone brought all the strikers in, Lazio struggled too much and wasn't able. Didn't have the con- the f- player was too tired to to uh, counteract and use all the chances uh, Frosinone gave Lazio. And so that's why we struggle. But still, Frosinone is not that bad team. They, they don't have very quality player, but they give everything uh, in a single match. So, you know, it's Lazio is a better team, yes, but still you have to play your best to, to beat uh, Frosinone. And today, in the second half, I thought a lot of Lazio players were really tired and that's why we struggle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are not a bad team. Uh, they really play with heart. Uh, I think uh, every time we play against uh, Frisinoni, I think we we imagine that it's going to be an easy game uh, with minimum effort, and we're going to win uh, for three, four, five. But uh, yeah, like Leo said, I think we uh, that's three games now in a row. I think we we've beaten them one nil, just barely. So, uh, so yeah, it's not an easy team to play against. Uh, it's right. Um, Yayan Efrizal, I hope I said it right, said, we played with 10 men since Berisha came in. No, maybe with 10 men, no. <laughs> but, yeah, as I said before, we were all expecting, at least I was expecting much more from from uh, from Berisha. I think he can give much more to this team. Uh, he fight, he fought on every tackle, but he, he made a lot of mistakes that could cost Lazio a lot. Yeah, we talked about Berisha. He made a lot of mistakes, you're right. But he just needs more time, I think. That's the only problem. He needs more time and he needs to, to gel more with the team and the players. And I think uh, the best for him is yet to come, hopefully. 
Well, it can be the, what, what we already saw be, because yeah. otherwise it's terrible. <laughs> um, still on Twitter, Alexander Mikkelsen. Lots of comment that Lazio played a bad match. Uh, the team was exhausted and got the best of it. We played smart but not beautiful. Frosinone, apart from one or two chances, in the end never were dangerous. I think that's a good win. Thoughts? Um, I think, Alexander, you're, you're right. The team was exhausted. The, the thing I'm thinking about is having a lot of players available like Cataldi, uh, like Perisha, and so on, maybe do more turnover, and especially when you make the substitution, don't, don't put in Leva and Lulic uh, that have already played it on Thursday. Maybe try Cataldi. I don't think it's gonna, it would have changed a lot if instead of Lulic, Cataldi would have came in. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the only thing. Uh, apart from that, I totally agree. Lazio played, let's not for, forget, on Thursday, extra time and penalties. Um, Inzaghi didn't have that many options because a couple of players were injured, especially in defence. We didn't say nothing about Rado, but I thought Rado was destroyed completely. And you can see even in the first half he was tired uh, and uh, and had cramps a, a couple of times. So uh, Inzaghi was really in a terrible situation in the defence. So yeah, at the end of the day, we take these three points that are very, very important. Um, we didn't play well, which is true, but there are a lot of reasons why Lazio didn't play well. Yeah, let's not forget that, uh, like, like uh, you guys said last week, uh, we are the only Italian team that has that are in three competitions. So, if if players are getting tired now and having muscular problems, then they are gonna be uh, dead by two two months because it's gonna be very tough. It's very tough in the in the next two months because we are we have very tough games we have a lot of games to play uh, I think February we have eight games or something like that or six games so it's going to be very tough so Inzaghi has to rotate smartly not just rotate he has to rotate smartly he can't play every every player every uh, starting 11 in every game he can he just can't do that because the players are going to get injured and badly yeah and and like next Thursday there is Empoli who it's at home, it's true, but Empoli is a, it's a team that plays very well, so it's going to be a difficult match for Lazio. And at the moment, it's early, but still we don't know who's going to play. There are a lot of doubts, I think, in the starting eleven with Immobile out, probably, Luis Alberto injured, and so on. Luckily, there's no match on Sunday, and then there's lazio Sevilla next Thursday, and then there's Genoa-Lazio the Sunday afterwards, so three days afterwards, Early and then there's Sevilla Lazio that is going to be played on Wednesday, and then there's a one week break and Lazio Milan. Yeah, a lot of games. So so there's a lot of games and yeah. pro- probably you're right when you say that players like Berisha and Durmizi will will play a lot of matches uh, in the coming days. I I think they have to because uh, other players have to rest now. So uh, it's going to be important to see uh, what what Inzaghi is going to do. But you know. As Alexander said, this is a very important match, a very important victory for Lazio. Three points really important. At the end of the day, it doesn't care how much we, we suffer. And on the other way, it, it's even true to say that Strakosha had to make only one great save. So yeah, the pressure, but they weren't able to, to shot on target. And now Lazio is fifth with the same points with Roma, 35. Just one point below Milan, that is fourth. And we already played against... Napoli and Juventus. So, you know, it, it's a much better situation considering uh, the start of the season where we were down uh, zero point and, you know, with a big gap compared to the others. So, this could be... Uh, po- Let's look even a little bit the positive side and not only the negative. Um, Patrick Bowman, again on Twitter, an awful performance today. Uh, and once again, we invite opponent to the game by giving away the initiative. We are very lucky we get away with a win. What was the logic by the first two substitution? Do you think Marusic was so much central in the offside because instructions? What do you think, uh, Rami? Sorry, I lost you for a bit there, but uh, okay, I'm back. 
Yeah, like we said, uh, like I said, I agree with Patrick. We were very lucky to win today, I think. Yeah, Strakosha did make one, say, one a very good save, but there was a, a, a very great, a good chance for, uh, for Frizinon before that. Uh, the player was one-on-one -on -one and he shot in the stands. So we were lucky today to, to, to get three points, but like you said, they were massive points because now we are uh, in the thick of it uh, with, uh, with Inter and Milan. We are five points away from Inter, which is very good. We are uh, one point away from Milan, and uh, the same points equal with uh, with uh, with Roma. Uh, the problem is that we we also have to consider Sampdoria, I think, and Atalanta because especially Atalanta because they have they have been really good in the past weeks, and uh, they don't play that uh, a lot of games like uh, we're gonna do. So it's gonna be a really tough uh, tough race for the Champions League uh, place. But uh, to be honest, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and you didn't mention Fiorentina that I think uh, is going to fight as well. They, they bought Muriel and I thought that's uh, a really good deal they made. Um, as you were saying, this Atalanta Sampdoria. Atalanta is playing probably the best football uh, these days. The big, the big question with this team is how long will they be able to, to carry on? Especially Atalanta. I think at the, at the moment, Atalanta is the best team of the one fighting for the Champions League spot. But Gasperini, who is proving to be a great manager, doesn't have that many options. So uh, I wonder how long they will be able to play like this. If they do, I think they are, could be even the favorite for this fourth spot. But I don't know if they're going to be able to, to make it till the end of the season. Yeah, so we'll have to we we'll have to wait and see. But uh, right now, the current form, if they, they they keep that current form, you're right. They are they are gonna be very dangerous uh, uh, to take that uh, fourth place in the Champions League. I think Inter are falling badly, so even Inter might not get the, a chance for a Champions League. So it's it's very open right now. Uh, for Fiorentina, yeah, I agree. They are good. Probably Fiorentina, if they play Roma every game, they will, be, they will win the league. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was funny. That was really. I, I, I think everybody is seeing that Roma is struggling, but seven-one against Fiorentina. That it's a team. You saw it uh, yesterday. They were able to draw uh, against Udinese, who is fighting for relegation, and and they were losing one 0 So Fiorentina is a team that has big potential. But it's still up and down, and probably will be like that all season long. So, yeah. to be honest, that game, that seven-one was that was an abnormal match. It's not gonna uh, occur again. But, but Roma, I think, uh, are still dangerous. Yesterday, I think against Milan, they were much better than Milan. I think they should have won. But they still have problems at, at the back, uh, which uh, which is good uh, for us. But it's gonna be tough for that Champions League race. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Roma played better yesterday, probably deserved to win. But uh, Donnarumma made a couple of great saves and probably there was a penalty for Milan. So, you know, at the end, probably the result of a draw is better. It, it, it's the right result and for sure it's the best result for Lazio. Yeah. Uh, Dave M, sometimes you're going to win ugly. Can't be beautiful every week. Yes, Dave, I could totally agree, especially after... Uh, Let's not forget that Lazio played against Napoli and Juventus before playing against Inter and reaching the extra time. So, three very, very tough matches for, for Lazio. So, I think it was normal that the team wasn't uh, in great shape. Um, so, that's why Lazio probably, especially in the second half, uh, didn't play that well. Uh, Simone Inzaghi spoke uh, just after the match and said that Immobile had a little bit of problems So he couldn't uh, run anymore. And so we closed the, finished the last 10 minutes in 10 men. Uh, Luis Alberto, we have to value. Uh, Correa wasn't available uh, because he wasn't in top form. Next Thursday, Milinko Isavic will be back, but we lose Parolo. So now we have to hope to recover the best uh, condition for all players. Um, and say that uh, Badel, Durmizi and Berisha played really well and probably... Soon it will, uh, Romulo will have a chance too. Yeah, we forgot about Romulo. Uh, he said Berisha played really well. Well, he said that uh, they were all very good. Uh, 
Badel, Durmizi and Berisha, who didn't play that much, were played well, give everything at least. Uh, and we didn't talk about Bastos. I thought today he played really, really well. Uh, probably he made just one mistake. The chance that you were saying that, uh, now I don't remember his name, missed badly. But apart from that, I thought Bastos played really, really well. He was really... Yeah, I think he, he, he was fantastic today, I think. Uh, he got to everything. He got to every ball. He clear, cleared every ball. The only uh, mistake he made uh, was the, that chance that uh, Frizzinoni missed. But uh, other than that, he was fantastic. I agree. But the problem is that he's probably going to play now every week because uh, I don't know Luis Felipe how, how long he's going to be out. Uh, Wallace uh, as well is injured. So we don't have many options on the back right now. Yeah, Inzaghi yesterday talked about the situation. He said that he hoped to have Felipe Ramos back for Empoli so next Thursday. Uh, now, I don't know if having back on the bench or able to play and said that Wallace will be probably missing one month. So, And without forgetting Radu, I thought if Inzaghi had other options, Radu would have played today because uh, he wasn't 100% fit, but simply Inzaghi didn't have other option. I thought the only option, and he tried it during the week, was playing Patrick there instead of Radu. But at the end, he preferred the experience of Radu. Yeah, I think uh, Inzaghi has uh, a lot of thinking to do uh, before the Empoli game. Uh, he has to rotate a lot of players. I think Immobile and Luis Alberto need need uh, need to rest, especially that we have a, a very big game against uh, uh, Sevilla on Thursday. So I think uh, Immobile has to rest. Uh, Luis Alberto has to rest, even if they have a lot uh, some a little problem. He has to to, to keep him t- safe. So. They don't get uh, a long-term t- injury. And uh, play with Caicedo, play with Berisha, play with Cataldi. He has a lot of options to play with. Yeah, but, but the problem is there's not a Vice uh, Immobile. Caicedo, we saw him playing there and it doesn't work. Maybe against Empoli, you can do it. I don't know. And they could be really important three points for Lazio if they win. Uh, against Empoli, so every game is now uh, important three points. <laughs> we can't lose any more points. You're, you're right. Yeah, that's that's the problem. So, but yeah, but you can't you can't risk uh, uh, having a player injured uh, uh, for a long term. If he mobile plays uh, with not one hundred percent fit or Luis Alberto, he'll get uh, a month or two injury, uh, muscular injury, which is going to be a disaster. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And, that, and that's the problem. We said it. Lazio needed this winter to sign a vision mobile, especially now that Rossi have left. Uh, so there are not that many options there. But we'll see what happens Thursday. I don't believe Ciro Mobile will play, especially after what Inzaghi said, that uh, he couldn't play the last minutes. It was funny because, I don't know if you notice, but one of the bench... Uh, when when Udinese well, sorry Udinese when Frosinone had that free kick nearly at the end of the match, one of the bench, one of the team of Inzaghi went at the bench. Inzaghi was doing the wall and said, and they, they shouted to Inzaghi to Immobile, take the yellow card, take the yellow card. Uh, I think this is because they know he's not going to be able to play next week, and so if he gets suspended, uh, he will be back after the. the the break and with no problem of uh, of getting suspended afterwards. So, I'll, <laughs> unfortunately, he didn't. But yeah, it was he funny. Move. Yeah, yeah, that's what probably they were asking. Well, I guess he can uh, come on uh, against the opponent at the last minute and get the record. <laughs> well, but then if he's fit, then well, we're gonna see what happens. Uh, Masie. I think that Chiro is great. He had so much strength to fight despite 120 minutes last time in the cup. Also, Parola and Leva are prices for the team. Yeah, again, uh, the problem is even even uh, Immobile, if he's not 100% fit, he cannot play as well like we used to see him. And I think we saw it today. He was struggling. Uh, and no one blames him, but he couldn't run pretty much all second half. So... Uh, it's a risk when you have those type of situation. So, um, yeah. What yeah, do you like think? Well, like, like I said, it, 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 for me, it's a huge surprise that Immobile played the whole 90 minutes 
and uh, and Caicedo came off after uh, 60 minutes. I can I still can't understand why. Uh, even, I, if, even if Caicedo's not playing well, uh, at least he has fresh legs. Uh, I think I think the idea was to take off Immobile, but then uh, yeah, but uh, Luis Alberto got injured. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that was the plan. That was the plan. Um, Greek staff. It's a good win, but how does that in any way argue against claim that it was a worrying, unsatisfying performance? Yeah, it's what we're saying. Uh, the, the most worrying thing for me is that Lazio played quite well in the first half and should have finished the match there because everybody knew that in the second half the fatigue, the tiredness of uh, Inter's match would have come up would have catch up with all those players and so Frosinone would have a chance to 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 attack and maybe score. So that's where I think Lazio should have been smarter and in the first half try to finish it. Uh, apart of this, yeah, I think all those injured players that was playing today didn't help for sure Lazio performance. Yeah. We saw we saw it uh, yesterday when uh, when Inter couldn't uh, when Inter lost uh, at home against Polonia. That was a huge surprise. But it's because they are very tired. The, uh, Spalletti played uh, also the, the same players that played on uh, on Tuesday in the cup. So they couldn't perform. They couldn't uh, do anything. So we should have Inzaghi should have changed something today to uh, to, to to keep the players. Um, the, to play the play, the fit players, uh, the, the the players that have uh, fresh legs. Today, the substitutions. Uh, two of the players who, who didn't play on uh, in the cup, uh, Padella and Correa, didn't complete the, the game, which is a surprise. Like I said, so he has to think. He has to rotate more smartly. He just he, he can't play every player. Yeah, uh, Luis Alberto is, is great. Luis Alberto is good. Uh, Immobile is good. Uh, he's very important to the team, but you have to think uh, forward. You, you can't play him in every game. No, I, I agree that it was surprising to see Leva and Lulic come in because they played all the match on, on Thursday. So I thought, again, he, he had other options and uh, and didn't take them. Um, Stefan Scarpulla, I don't think... I didn't think Durmizio Berisha did anything to warrant keeping their place. But and Casado, however, impress. Agree, uh, Stefan. As we said, uh, I, I like Badel. <laughs> Rami didn't like that much. Uh, Casado scored. I thought he was helping a lot. Uh, so I, I would have keep him. Uh, again, Durmizi need to find the right position, especially when he when he's attacking. But he he gave everything, and that's the type of player that we were missing. Especially he has the speed that probably Lazio doesn't have. I don't see another speedy player with Durmizi if you take off Correa. So he can be really useful. Berisha, I still think he has a huge potential, but today made too many mistakes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Durmizi, I think Durmizi is good. He's much better, than, at least, than Lulic on the left side. Uh, I'd rather have Durmizi uh, as a left winger and Lulic in midfield than Lulic uh, as a left winger. He still needs a lot of time. He, he needs to understand the, the, the Serie A. He needs to understand his position and what is uh, is needed from him. But other than that, I think Durmizi should should play again and should start more games. Um, as for Berisha, like I said, he needs more time. He needs to, to, to play more and to get fit. Uh, Badel and uh, Caicedo. Caicedo, well, no one likes Caicedo, but at least he's got fresh legs, so... And he scored today. I really liked his goal. We didn't talk about the goal. Uh, the goal he was he, he missed two unbelievable chances before that. But the goal was an unbelievable strike. Uh, I really liked. So he should have to me. He should have completed the game. Uh, as for Badel, Badel still needs to play. Badel doesn't even doesn't play more uh, a lot. Uh, so he needs to to play more. Uh, my question is. Uh, uh, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we talked about the Casado's goal. I thought, yeah. as I said, he scored with the most difficult chances. I thought he had two at the beginning. Very good. And we saw it. Lazio started. The first 15 minutes, I thought Lazio played really well. Frosinone wasn't able to get outside the box. And then suddenly, Lazio stopped playing that well. At maybe tiredness, I don't know. Maybe Frosinone find the right measure to, to stop Lazio. And luckily... 
Lazio find that goal uh, again, uh, like like against Sinter, it was uh, a fast exchange between Immobile and Casado, and this time it was Casado who finished it uh, with a nice strike. Uh, yeah, it, it looks like when they play close to each other, they they can become very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. What's the situation with Lukaku right now? Because he hasn't since he came back from uh, the, the Newcastle. Uh, he hasn't been uh, in the team for two games right now. So yeah, this this is strange because it looks like he was going to to Newcastle, etc. And then he came back, and they said the problem was a money problem. Lazio didn't want to pay uh, the full salary of Lukaku. But yesterday, Inzaghi said that Lukaku now is training on his own. He has to recover. He has a little problem with his uh, knee, if I'm not wrong, if I remember correctly. So he will be out. For a while, I wonder if this is the real reason why. Yeah, uh, exactly. He didn't go through. <laughs> if he has a problem, then he must have failed uh, the medical. But at Newcastle. But luckily, we have Romulo now who can yeah. uh, come in and play. Even because I was so happy about Marusic against Inter on Thursday, I thought today he played bad as usual. Um, in some in some occasion, it looks to me that he was scared to try. The one against once against uh, against the the defender to dribble past him. Uh, you need a winger to be more aggressive, and Kasi- and Marusic didn't do it today. And if you don't do it against Empoli, then when are you going to do it? Yeah, Marusic likes to play safe. I think he doesn't uh, risk a lot. But in his pos- position, he has to, to 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 make dribbles. He has to risk sometimes and uh, get past the the, the defenders. But he was okay, I think, today. He, yeah, he didn't make any mistakes, but he didn't uh, do anything uh, useful, I, th- I think. Maybe uh, Romulo would start uh, against Empoli. I don't know. Yep. Um, Stefan Scarpul again saying, did Inzaghi rush into Lulic for Luis Alberto change when he pulled out, or was it planned eventually? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think... I thought... Uh, he he looked at the bench and the most safe solution for him was was uh, signing uh, Lulic, which I don't think was was the perfect idea. It's true that Lulic is the most um, probably physical option he has. He is one that is used to run a lot, and so maybe with a team very tired, he could give um, that that option, that energy that maybe was missing. But yeah, I, I would probably put a, I, I would have brought in uh, uh, Cataldi, as we said, instead of uh, instead of uh, Lulic. But yeah, I don't think he was prepared anyway. Yeah, it made no sense. Uh, Inzaghi was forced uh, to, to take off uh, Luis Alberti because he he stopped suddenly and uh, and held his uh, his leg, so he had to come off. Uh, but yeah, maybe maybe Lulic was the was the incorrect. Uh, player to come in. Maybe even Romelu could have come, came in. He plays in midfield sometimes. So, I don't know. Inzaghi played the safe card like he always does and played Lulic. Yeah, you know what you're getting from Lulic. Uh, so, that's why he decided to play uh, Lulic. Maybe, again, Cataldi could have been an option, even though playing Cataldi, Lulic can play in, in that position uh, as Luis Alberto. Probably he could have moved Berish up and play Cataldi behind him if he brought in Cataldi. But yeah, that that was the decision I think. Uh, Inzaghi, that's why Inzaghi made that decision. Sorry, um, Marseille again. Have you transferred Alisson out? We said it at the beginning <laughs> of uh, of the podcast. We are doing a little bit of turnover like Inzaghi. So yeah, uh, he has cramps. Alisson is on the bench. We don't know if he's going to be back Thursday. We have to see how he trains this week and then we're going to make the decision. Um, Obada, as well on Twitter, say, why Lazio are playing lastly on Monday on this round and the first team in the next round on Thursday? There is no time to recover. Yes, it's true. Uh, obviously, Lazio played on Monday today because they played on Thursday night, Coppa Italia, so they need some time to recover. And they're playing Thursday because there's the Six Nation of Rugby at the Olimpico. And so uh, Lazio will play on Thursday because they need to prepare the pitch before. Um, 
So unfortunately, there won't be that much time to recover for Lazio. This is a problem, and this is it, this is a problem of having the six nation playing at the same uh, stadium where Lazio and Roma are playing. This is terrible. That that's that's absolutely silly to to to, to play because of the stadium uh, wanting to get ready for the six nations. Get your own stadium. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I know. It, it's it's another discussion. We we can have another time because it will take yeah, I ages. Thought, I thought it, it was it was an advantage from uh, from uh, from Serie A to, to get us to rest uh, before the Isbila game, but <laughs> I guess not. Yeah, the 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 positive thing is that the Lazio will have a week of rest before the the yeah, Europe League, which is really important. Hopefully, Lazio will be able to uh, to recover some of the players again. Inzaghi said that um, um, they hope Luis Alberto there's nothing bad. He said he was talking about cramps. But, you know, if you have cramps, you don't ask for a substitution like that. Uh, maybe he wasn't feeling well even before during the weekend. He preferred to get out to avoid getting worse. We, we're going to see. But still, we, we have to see who, who is available. Uh, next Thursday, but I think that Inzaghi would would, would not risk Immobile Rus Alberto if he has other option available. No, you can't risk them right now. It's too, it's too it will be too costly to risk them in this game. Yeah, especially because we should have Correa back from the injury. Yeah. And uh, Milinkovic, and we have Cataldi, and we have Berisha, so we have a lot of options. Yeah. The, the the only player that is missing, I said it already a lot of time, is the Vichy Mobile. Cassade yeah. will play there probably. Yeah. We know that it's not the best solution, but I think it's it's a sort of emergency solution for Lazio now, and uh, I think it's better to rest in Mobile than yeah. than to risk another uh, worse injury. Exactly. Uh, so at at the end, we can say this was a very positive week for Lazio. Um, Inter lost at home. Fiorentina drew against Udinese. Roma and Milan drew. So Lazio was able to recover a lot of points. And now it's it's sixth, but with the same point of Roma that is fifth. And just one point behind uh, AC Milan. So uh, that's really promising. Um, yeah. And Roma will play fr- Friday against Chievo away. Not an easy match, but not the most difficult. There is Fiorentina Napoli on Saturday, Parma Parma Inter, and Milan is playing at home against Cagliari. Probably Milan has the easiest match of the of the other team fighting for the Champions League spot as well as Atalanta that's playing at home against Pal. So it, again, against Empoli is another most imp- very important team match for Lazio. They have to win to keep up with the other teams and hope that maybe someone of the other teams loses points unexpectedly. Yeah, every game is important. Uh, from now until the end of the season, every point is important. We can't risk uh, uh, dropping too many points, especially with uh, with the record that we have uh, against uh, the, the big teams. We have uh, a lot of games still to play against uh, big teams, so if you're going to lose that, you can't lose the, the, the other games, you can't lose the points from the, the the easier games, I guess. So every game is important. We have to win every game and hope that other teams uh, drop points. Inter are dropping a lot of points right now. I still, in, I think Inter right now are in crisis. So it's it's a good uh, it's a good uh, time to, to to get close to them. Uh, it's not we're not too far away from them. We're just five points. So it's going to be uh, we have to win our games and it's going to be good. I think. Yeah, the positive thing at the moment is that Lazio already played against Juventus and Napoli, so the top two are, are gone while all the other has to play against them. Inter is struggling. Uh, I don't know if it's an official crisis, but they are not playing well as before, and it looks like Spalletti have lost the team. Roma as well, after the terrible defeat against Fiorentina, played quite well against Milan, but still they have problems. AC Milan, it's a better team now with Piatek, but we have to see if all the problems are solved. They didn't convince me yesterday, for example. And I thought that if Fazio doesn't make, doesn't sleep on that 
cross then Piatek never scores then so uh, Milan could could have lost that match so to be honest even Lazio is not Lazio played really well against Juventus but lost and uh, today you can see that there are players a little bit tired so of of the team fighting for the Champions League there's not one that is playing unbelievably well except mm-hmm. from Atalanta. Atalanta but yeah. but we don't know how long Atalanta will last yeah, it's 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 a strange situation. Every team has the, a lot of problems, except for Juventus and Napoli. Even Napoli have some problems, I think. Well, but even it, even Juventus, I yeah, guess. Yeah, they they drew against uh, yeah, Parma, and they were winning three one. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's a strange thing. It, it, and this brings me to another another thing to say. A, a lot of Lazio fan was complaining. How can it be possible? Casares Inzaghi doesn't play Casares, and now Casares. Is signing for Juventus that will win the Scudetto, etc., etc. I hope Saturday everybody realized why Casares wasn't playing with Inzaghi. It's not that that Inzaghi is, is an idiot and say no, Casares is good, but I don't want to play him. I prefer Wallace. Wallace and Bassos was playing because Casares is is not performing as well as he used to. I think you know the best of him has passed, and he's. He's a very dangerous central defender because he can make terrible mistakes, and we saw it against Parma. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not any better than what they have, I think. But uh, right now they have uh, a crisis uh, at the back with uh, Benucci injured and uh, and uh, Chiellini and uh, Brazzali. So they uh, they are very thin at the back. So they had to play Caceres. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, our, the players we have right now uh, are playing much better than him. So it's not a total loss to, to, to sell him. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, again, transfer mar- going to the transfer market was, wasn't was what we expected, but no surprise there. Uh, we were hoping for a striker, but uh, we knew that it wasn't coming. I'm, I'm, I have to say that at the end, Seeing Romulo coming, it's it's a good option for Lazio, uh, and was inexpe- unexpected. So, I hope he he performed well. I, I I believe he's gonna be having a chance soon. Seeing the injury situation of Lazio, uh, and yeah, we have to cross finger and hope that Luis Alberto Immobile are not uh, didn't have any bad injury. They they hopefully will be able to play soon enough. Don't think that we're gonna see again against Empoli, but Inzaghi has other option, and I hope he's gonna try them. Yeah, I think he's gonna save them to, uh, uh, for the Europa League uh, game against uh, Ishbilia, uh to be ready and to be fresh. It's a massive game. Ishbilia are a very tough ge- a tough team to play against. Uh, so uh, for me, the, the logical situation is to, to save them for that game. And he has uh, Correa and he has um, Caicedo and Berisha and Milinkovic Savic coming back to to play, so it's not uh, it's not a disaster. The only problem is that the back uh, he can't change anything because we we don't have to, uh, too many players to, to play. So uh, hopefully we we'll get the three points against Empoli uh, somehow uh, and uh, and uh, get ready for Ishbilia. Yeah, let's hope let's hope that uh, Ramos is really able to play against. Empoli next Thursday and maybe give a little bit of rest that, to Rado that uh, looks really, really tired. Uh, yeah. Rami, I think we can wrap it up here if you don't have nothing else to say. Yeah, no stats for me today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, leave it, I'll leave it to Alice. <laughs> well, last time I stole a stat from him. So, <laughs> uh, Thank you again for joining me and thanks everybody for listening for to this episode. I know it, it wasn't the best performance from Lazio but three very 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 important points against a team Frosinone that always make you fight hard for for the three points so it was good to get back to a win uh, thanks everybody for listening please rate and review our podcast on iTunes uh, if you have if you know uh, football fans of Lazio fans please tell them about the podcast and you can listen and listen to us on iTunes on Spreaker follow us on uh, Twitter on Facebook, and if you want to support us, there is our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Rami, for joining me. And we're going to talk again next Thursday after 
Lazio Empoli. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night. Goodbye.